Hi everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, we've got our, another um, series of talk, one of our series of talks here at Scottish Developers, and uh, shortly we'll have Alistair Shepherd joining us to learn all about CDNs. But first, I thought I'd give a little bit of an update here from Scottish Developers. Um, first of all, please do say hello in the YouTube chat. We've got folks letting us know where they're joining us virtually from. Um, but, but, it's become a bit of an unofficial competition since we've been doing the virtual ones to see who the furthest afield visitor is. Um, so do say hello. And also, if you have any questions um, during the stream, do just put them in there and we'll ask them for Alistair at the end. Um, and let us know on hashtag Scottish developers if, if you follow us on, on Twitter, if you've got any questions or if you just want to say hi. And our next talk after tonight's is on the 13th of April. So we have um, Sarah Lane giving us a chat about Azure and Octopus Deploy, which I'm personally really looking forward to. It should be really good fun. Um, and then we're also looking for any more upcoming speakers. So still virtually for now, hopefully. Um, we'll be able to do real life meetups again soon this year, hopefully. But in the meantime, if you have any recommendations or you'd like to volunteer um, to be a speaker, then do get in touch. We can facilitate that anything from a 10 minute lightning talk right through to running a workshop. But if you'd like some support with that, just let us know. Um, but tonight we have Alistair Shepherd with Making Assets Fly and Images Breeze with Image CDNs. And with that, I will bring in Alistair. Hi, Alistair. Hi. Thanks for joining us from sunny Edinburgh, right? Uh, not, not so sure it's sunny at J the moment. Just Edinburgh. But, uh, Edinburgh, certainly, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, I'm through here in Glasgow. Um, and I think in the chat, we've got some folks from Motherwell, from Glasgow, and, and a few other places. So um, you're representing the other coast for us tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself to everyone? Yeah, sure. Um, hi, I'm Alistair. I'm a front-end developer, um, as, as I said, in, in Edinburgh, um, originally from the Highlands, but uh, down no, here on the East Coast. <laughs> um, awesome. I work for a company called Series 8, uh, which is a remote front-end agency. We do lots of kind of marketing websites and lots of really heavy front-end stuff. Um, and yeah, I'm talking about image to the end today. Yeah, awesome. I'm really looking oh, yeah. forward. Really, yeah, there's your slides. Uh, yeah, really looking forward to, to hearing about um, kind of performance and how we can optimize images and other assets is something that as a web developer, um, I'm really interested in. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, right. And I'll, yeah. I'll leave you to it. I'll say goodbye. I'll jump in if we've got any questions or tech issues. But if not, over to you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so hello, everyone. Um, I'm going to be talking about image CDNs today, and um, particularly how we can use them for uh, performance uh, and um, making image development on the web a bit easier. Kind of heads up, um, I don't have any experience with .NET, and I'm sure lots of people are uh, familiar with .NET. Um, it's fairly agnostic, so it shouldn't be a problem, but I will have ex examples in other languages. Um, if anyone wants to help out and give me a uh, a .NET example later on after this, then thanks. Okay, I'll get started. So first I wanna talk about the current state of images on the web, just more generally, how are things, what's the lay of the land at the moment? But images are easy, right? Is what I hear you saying. You just, here you go, humble image tab, tag, uh, pop a source attribute on there, an alt attribute, because we care about accessibility, and there we go, we're done. Right, okay, that was a quick talk. Well, I wish. Actually, that doesn't consider a lot of the challenges we face developing sites, particularly when it comes to performance. Um, there is some continuous movement on the next slide, so if that's an issue for you, look away now and I'll let you know when it's ended. The first is responsive images. So this is something we've been dealing with for quite a while now um, with responsive devices and with building a website to handle massive range of screen sizes. Here is a Wii demo that goes through a fairly average laptop size, fair, fairly average tablet size, and then mobile. Um, you'll notice though that the images change width as the screen size changes. That shouldn't be unexpected. We can't fit them in the same space. Layouts have to deal with that, particularly when we have complex designs. But we're kind of in a situation where the image size 
changes depending on the screen size. Ideally, we don't want the browser to download an image larger than it needs because that's wasteful in terms of uh, network usage, in terms of people's data caps, in terms of taking time and uh, blocking the, the network. Um, and we've also got to deal with the fact that you'll see in this example, the biggest these images is, are displayed is on the mobile, not on the desktop. So it's not just a case of big screen, big image. We've got to handle some intelligence there and knowing how big the image is displayed. So ideally we should have the image available in many different sizes so it can be exactly what's needed. That's the movement over now. Uh, HTML gives us the source set and sizes attributes to help us deal with zips. So if you're not familiar with it on the image tag, we can use the source attribute to present a kind of fallback uh, URL. And then the source set, we can give several URLs to several differently sized images and tell the browser how wide it is. So it can then infer which one it needs. We then give some extra hints with the sizes attribute to say, hey, when the screen width is greater than 800 pixels, this image is displayed at 768 pixels. Otherwise, it's the full width of the viewport. So that helps us kind of give a hint to the browser to do that. Another potential performance area is in the image format we serve. So JPEG, PNG, these are kind of longstanding ones that we've been using for, for decades now. Um, the traditional viewpoint of what image format to use. If it has transparency, use a PNG. If it doesn't, then use a JPEG. There's actually a lot, a bit more to it now. You'll see I've got uh, some examples here. I've taken this image of an otter. I've run it, converted it several different image formats. The source was 300 kilobytes, optimized the JPEG and it's 60 kilobytes, but converting to some newer web, uh, newer image formats like WebP, AVIF or JPEG XL means that the, allows us to decrease the image size with no impact on, um, on, the, on the visual quality, on how it appears. Caveat to this though is browser support. We can't just assume that every browser has WebP. We can't assume every, we can't go straight for JPEG XL even though it offers the smallest image size because it isn't supported. And the same with AVIF and WebP. They can offer great performance benefits and great image size uh, decreases for browsers that support them. But for browsers that don't, we need to offer some alternative. So currently, if we could only serve one image, then we'd have to do it so with the JPEG baseline, which as you see is a lot bigger. High density displays also, um, also affect the size and performance of images on, on our site. So you see uh, I've got iPhone 12 Pro on pictured here, which has a screen width of 1170 pixels, viewport width, which is what we see in CSS and on the web of 390 pixels, which means for every web pixel, web pixel, we have uh, th or three times three, so nine um, device pixels. So the browser could decide to load an image with a resolution three times larger with a potential nine times increase in file size, which is pretty huge um, if you've got an image heavy site. We can mitigate, mitigate the increase in file size here by increasing the image compression because the image is displayed quite small, uh, is kind of quite densely packed. We can make the image more compressed uh, to save file size while still displaying it at that higher density display. I've just seen someone pop in the chat, oh, Safari support finally. Yes, but not only on a certain nut. It's only on newer Mac OS and iOS versions. So even though Safari supports it on the newest iOS on a iPhone 10, I think, which isn't that old, I would say, Safari doesn't and will never support it. So it's kind of, even though Safari support is there, it's only kind of there. 
which is a bit of an annoying situation. Anyway, another thing to consider, lazy loading and decoding. We can use the lo loading attribute set to lazy or eager, depending on the position on the page. That would uh, delay the loading of an image until it's in view, um, which can be very useful for, pay for images, lots of images, particularly with loads down the bottom of the page. To, there's no need to load an image that isn't in view. Um, and also the decoding async attribute, which is very complex and oftentimes can be very difficult to work out how useful it is. Um, but it may offer a performance benefit and it may not, depending on your site. We put all that together and we end up with this mess. I think it's fair to say that's a mess. This is for one image. Um, we've got five source attributes within the picture element source element, sorry, within the picture element, um, and the image element within that. Uh, that's three image formats, um, high DPI and standard DPI quality levels. Um, we can use the WebKit min device pixel ratio media query to choose what pixel ratio we're doing the images for. It's got responsive images, six image, image sizes, which in my experience, isn't actually that many. I oftentimes, for a big, high, important image, there's maybe seven or eight there. Um, and all the other optimizations like width, height attributes, loading, decoding, uh, alt attribute, uh, sizes, or set, all of this. And that's for that's uh, all of those images put in a folder is this, which is a huge amount going on. Um, and that's for one image. Imagine if we've got a we've got a photo gallery website or a website with a lot of images that can be a bit crazy. Uh, Thirty six images in total there. So it's not often we'll be writing our own image markup like on the previous slide, but it does illustrate how much is going on and how much we need to consider when handling images on our sites. So I've put together our image processing wish list. What is the ideal circumstance? How do we ideally uh, deliver with images on the web? So firstly, we should optimize images and compress them where possible with fairly little effort using command line tools, web tools, plugins, etc. We can decrease the size of images without any loss in, in visual quality. We could convert to several different formats. So WebP, AVIF, JPEG, and Excel, which is not out yet, but coming soon. Um, we should update and update to support new ones. As I said, like AVIF and JPEG and Excel coming soon. We should be able to update to support them when, they're, when they are supported. We should resize images to many different sizes for responsive devices. Fairly self-explanatory, we need quite a few in order to handle every size an image may be displayed at. We should handle different quality levels depending on the density. So that example there with the iPhone 12, potentially nine times increase in, in density uh, or in file size rather for an image. By compressing it more, we can decrease the impact of that. And as a bonus, um, I've got quality analysis because uh, uh, performing quality analysis comparing image sizes between different formats. So it's not common, but sometimes WebP or AVIF images are can be larger than their optimized JPEG counterparts. This is just due to how formats differ in compression. Uh, as I said, it's not often, but I've seen it happen and it does happen occasionally. In these cases, we should serve the JPEG, not the newer format. So it doesn't, doesn't go that even though WebP is a newer format and is generally speaking smaller, it isn't necessarily always. So in these cases, we, sh we should serve the smaller file. Uh, this is a bonus because it's difficult to do automatically on the web. It's almost impossible to do using standard picture and source set uh, responsive images in HTML. And very few sites and tools do this. So it's, it's, I put it as a bonus here. 
And that's to display a few images on a web page, something that is not particularly complex and has been on the web since 1999. I think even before that, actually, it just came into my head. Okay, so that was web um, images on the web in general. So I now want to talk about specifically how we might implement image systems, um, how they're done commonly and how we might do so uh, for our own. So generally, generally speaking, people are easily, either manually optimizing, uploading, converting images. They use a package or component in their CMS, template, build tooling, language, whatever, um, or maybe a custom process uh, built using tools available. Um, so for the manual side of things, uh, you can use tools like this is a website called squoosh.app, which uh, allows you to upload an image and manually resize, convert and compress images. You'll see here, this example is a three megabyte, it's a, or almost three megabyte, uh, originally JPEG being converted to a AVIF, and it's 96% smaller. Um, that can be a lot of work to do for every image though. And if we're having to do JPEG, WebP, AVIF, this isn't even considering JPEG XL, uh, with several different image sizes, multiple quality levels, then we've got a huge number of files we've got to manually create, manually optimize. And that's a lot going on, whether or not you're doing it manually or automatically. If you use provided tooling, um, like as part of your CMS or, or language, or you write your own custom tooling, it can be quite tricky to get this right. Um, so in terms of CMS, it may not prioritize compression, resizing, or may not convert formats. This is WordPress is particularly well known for uh, having quite poor performance here because it doesn't compress or convert formats um, and has fairly um, basic resizing. Uh, custom tool in particular can be quite expensive and time consuming for developers to maintain. If it takes more than, if you spend more than a couple hours each week or in total or a few days a year, then that's quite expensive for a site to be worrying about images and spending time on that. Uh, it may also use large amounts of resources, manipulating images on upload or build. So on upload, uh, you may be having to get a bigger server in order to compensate for the resources that are spent uh, manipulating images, which can be quite a lot, uh, or build in terms of Jamstack, if you're familiar with that, then Maybe you've got a certain amount of time you can spend on, on your CI um, and resizing images is taking up that time. And if you're storing your images somewhere, depending on where that is, that may cost you money. Uh, if you're storing your images on AWS on, uh, in an S3 bucket, then storing every image will, will cost you a little bit, but still will cost which leaves us in a situation where sites are loading an increasing number of images and the size of images are increasing. Oftentimes this is just down to platforms not offering important features for imaging, image performance and making it quite hard to get right. It's a quite tricky thing to get right anyway, even if you've got total control yourself, um, but particularly platforms often don't provide the tools we need for this. Okay, I'm going to take you back to 2019, to a site I was building at the time, and the circumstances that made me first try out an image CDN, so image issues in the wild. This is a screenshot of the website. It's for an art gallery local to where I grew up. Um, friends with the guy who runs it, so I built the website. Uh, this was a fresh redesign and rebuild. Uh, it was client managed content, they were uploading all of their images, very visual, it's an art gallery, images and the art and what you can see is the most important thing. It was in a reasonably rural area, so we wanted to ensure performance was very good. People, uh, tourists coming up wanting to 
have a look at the website, have a look at the opening time, something like that on a 3G connection, which is quite common in the Highlands, um, would need a well-performing site in order to be able to access it. It was built with a Jamstack build tool with headless WordPress as a CMS. That's somewhat irrelevant, um, but yeah, that's what it's built with. Uh, it was one of the main things was to display all the artists and artwork they were exhibiting and selling that art online. Uh, particularly with COVID, that became a lot more important. So there was around 20 artists on the website uh, at launch. They had up to 40 to 50 pieces of art each, which meant we had hundreds of studio quality images. That is now push pushing thousands. And the guy who runs it is a photographer. Um, and he's got a like massive flatbed scanner for this, uh, for this art. Each image he uploads is about 20 megabytes. Um, obviously, that can't be shipped to the client, uh, to, to, to users. 50, 20 megabyte images is a ridiculous amount to download over a 3G connection. So we needed to do quite a lot of work to make, to make this well-performing, to make it work. One thing the client said stuck with me, the art on the new website has to be as high quality as possible, which makes sense. Um, it's, it's about the artwork. It needs to reflect the quality of the art accurately so that people can decide whether they want to buy it, can decide that they want to come based upon that quality. Um, but it does present a bit of a challenge for developers because the entire concept of performance optimization, when it comes to images particularly, is let's remove as much information from the image as possible in order to improve performance. So I built my own image process for this. I couldn't find one that worked well enough for me. Converted uh, images to WebP, that was fine. Uh, it was easy to add IVIF in future. Um, this is, by the way, the, uh, the wish list that I built before. Um, resize images to many different sizes. I did that whenever a new image size was needed. I specified it and it was generated. It didn't handle different quality levels depending on density. I could have done that, but it's something that I didn't, wasn't really familiar with at the time. And it hasn't really come up until more recently due to the increase from two times screen density to three times screen density. Uh, as a bonus, the performing quality levels, quality analysis, I have absolutely no idea how I would have done this. As I said, it's pretty much impossible to do this with standard HTML. Um, so I didn't do that either. And at first, it was OK. It did what I wanted, performed decently, improved the Lighthouse score by Lighthouse performance score by 15 points, roughly. Um, so it did improve things. But it created additional costs of servers, services, and storage. Uh, we were paying for a CI tool to build this uh, whenever there was a change in content, um, which meant that site updates when he uploaded a new image went from around 30 seconds, just processing the HTML, pulling in data from the, from the CMS to almost 10 minutes because it had to do all of this image processing on that build. A way we could mitigate this was paying for some sort of cache system, um, but all of these were additional costs that had quite a big impact and they created quite a lot of technical debt. Um, it made the site significantly more challenging to work on. This was a unique setup for this site. So your mileage may vary, of course, but from a lot of the other sites I've worked on and people I've spoken to, setups like this are pretty common. Um, image setups tend to be either simple and fairly poor performing or complex and or great performing, but complex um, and quite difficult to manage or work on. Okay, so I've mentioned image CDNs a few times. Let's talk about image CDNs. Um, they came to my rescue for that project. So what is an image CDN? Image CDN is a content delivery network 
So uh, you'll know these in terms of like Akamai, Cloudflare, uh, various services that will serve your website from multiple servers around the globe. Uh, image CDNs are kind of a subset of that. They are content delivery networks that specialize in image processing. That's the main thing they do. Third-party services that sell a solution for the developer experience and uh, of working with images and improving performance. It sits between the web server of your site and the user's browser, transforming images on the fly by changing image URLs generally. These are a few of the more common ones. Cloudinary is quite a big one, so you may be familiar with that. So this is a kind of traditional website diagram where you've got assets on your website. In this case, I've got a WordPress site. Does It doesn't matter. I probably should have removed that logo, but hey, yeah. Um, assets are sent from the web server to the user's browser directly. Simplified, of course, it'll go through a few hops, but generally speaking, that's, that's the functional process. And image CDN changes that up slightly. Our HTML, CSS, and JS still go directly um, from the server to the browser, but we put our images through an extra hop, through the image CDN. Um, so the image CDN will get a request from the browser for the optimized image, and then it will request the source image from your web server, process it, and then send it off as, as an optimized one. Alternatively, you could use a media storage system or, or uh, kind of S3 bucket, for example, um, as the source for your images. Um, so this is quite a common pattern for, for some sites to offload your images to, uh, to an S3 bucket, and then an image CDN can pick those up from there instead of from your server directly. Okay, so it's all very well saying, okay, showing diagrams and explaining that, but how do we use them? We start with an image CDN domain. So this will be given when you sign up for an account, some sort of random string, maybe you'll be able to customize it, dot image cdn.com, something along those lines. We then add the URL to our source image. So we say the image we want to work with at the moment is our site.com, blah, blah, example.jpg. Many CDN providers allow you to make presets or aliases. So in this example, um, we can say, actually, when we say example.jpg, we mean go to outside.com slash source slash assets. And that makes it a bit easier and terser. We then add parameters to transform the image. So we're saying, hey, we want example.jpg, and we want it with a width of 600 pixels and height of 400 pixels. And that's what we'll get. Different CDNs have different formats, but they work on the same concepts. If you're familiar with Cloudinary at all, this is how, how they do it, where the, um, the parameters are in a different form, but it's still the exact same, exact same concept. So the advantage of this is now you're, they're handled separately from your main site, your main server, or your build. Um, this can be useful for minimizing server costs or uh, CI costs. Um, it's, these are managed by image experts. So these companies have the, the, the experts, the kind of probably best, most qualified people in image images and image optimization in the world. So it's kind of almost like you're getting the best the best available as part of your team when you're doing this. And the kicker, the killer feature for me is automatic format detection. So you'll see here in this screenshot, uh, which is of the Chrome DevTools, I'm requesting a birchcanopy.jpg image. But what's being returned to the browser is, as you see in the content type header here, underlined, is a WebP. And that's because the image CDN has worked out that this browser supports WebP, and we can serve that instead. Most CDNs provide a lot of different transformations uh, and give you a lot you can do. So here I've got kind of a banner with 
uh, automatic gravity, so it automatically focuses on the key point of the image, in this case, the otter. Uh, and then at the bottom here, um, I guess how Elton John sees the world, um, a wide banner colored pink. Um, but it's all very well saying, uh, adding fancy effects to, to a single image. But how can we actually use this as developers to make our lives easier, our development easier, and websites better? This does very much depend on what platform, what process, system, languages, all of this you use. Um, but generally speaking, we can simplify the markup we produce, however we produce that markup. So this is how we can manually write the markup for our earlier complicated example using an image CDN. So whereas we had uh, five source elements here, we've only got one, and that's to handle the pixel ratio, and we've got the image, image tag. So that what we can do here is instead of having to generate all of these images in advance, generate the different sizes uh, and the different formats, we can use the image CDN's parameters. So uh, in this example here, you'll see in the source set of the top example, we've got W underscore 300 to set the width of the image to 300 pixels and Q40 to set the quality level. So here we can simply just change those parameters in order to handle our resizing and our quality. So that's a lot better than manually having to create all these images. It's probably a lot better than having uh, some sort of script running that resizes all of these images for you. You don't have to worry about that and you don't have to maintain that. Um, but there's still a lot of repetition. It's a lot we don't really have to deal with here. So there's a few different ways you can integrate this. One is using a plugin or platform integration. Um, so for example, at the top here, I've got on Shopify, they provide a, uh, a um, filter um, and part of their template language to say, yeah, okay, I want this image and I want an image URL. Uh, I want it to be this size and I want to crop it. Um, other tools like Cloudinary has a WordPress plugin, has plugins for other providers too, which gives you a visual way to manage that if you're uh, more non-technical or editor or for editors or something like that. And in the bottom right here, I've got an example of some of the uh, integrations that ImageKit and other image CDN offers. So we've got uh, PHP.NET, Java, um, plus React Angular, all of these different different platforms. Depending on how you build your sites, you could make your own abstractions that make this super easy. So if you use a kind of handlebars style templating language, uh, you can set up short codes. So this is uh, a short code in uh, 11T with non -jucks. Um, but this would work in similar and similar templating languages like Twig, Ginger, Liquid, um, and I'm sure many others, it's quite a common, common process. But here you'll see I've managed to remove a huge amount of the, of the markup that we had in this earlier example into the key parameters of that only I can give as the developer and it'll work out the rest. If you use component-based frameworks like React, for example, you could have a custom component that does similar thing, generates all the markup for you uh, like before. But in reality, um, oh, here we go, I've got another example. Uh, you could have a function in whatever language you prefer and use. So again, I'm not familiar with, with .NET, but you could write a function that formats the markup in the right way with only a few parameters. This is the one that I use for uh, PHP sites. And again, fairly similar. It's just a function that outputs that markup. In reality, though, image CDNs, working with image CDNs is just manipulating URLs. It's just working with strings. So you can use them with pretty much any technology you fancy. Uh, where, wherever and however you build websites, image CDNs can make managing and transforming those images a lot easier. Uh, I use them at work quite often using uh, with 
Shopify, PHP, Jamstack sites across CMS. Uh, but I know people who've implemented them in many different languages, CMSs, and frameworks. Um, .NET and Umbraco, WordPress have done a bit of too. And even know people who've built Android and iOS apps that handle, uh, that offload the image processing from like user uploaded images and stuff like that to a image CDN because that's infrastructure they don't need to manage anymore. There can also be a great way to work, make how you work with images platform agnostic across your entire team. If you build sites using multiple different languages or CMSs or frameworks, then instead of having to relearn how it's implemented in this project, how it's implemented in this other project, this one's entirely different, uh, you can have consistency across all of the sites, sites or, I guess, apps you work on. Going back to that previous example I had, what tangible benefits might we gain from moving to using a image CDN? And particularly, what tangible benefits did I gain for that, for that website? So what I did is use the cloud image, image CDN. Um, it was just the one I chose at the time for no particularly strong reason. Um, excuse me. Uh, we set up a custom code solution using a uh, liquid shortcode, like in one of those previous examples, that took a few parameters, outputted and generated all the markup we needed, and we removed that custom toolchain. It was already a pretty well-optimized site, and the images were already pretty good, but the image performance improved with an image CDN by 19 points in the Lighthouse test and image bytes decreased by 27%. And this is because the experts at cloud image are better at images than me. Turns out, who knew? Um, if I was as good as them, I'd be working for them, I guess. Um, but seriously, like the tools and the processes they have set up are significantly better than pretty much any custom process I could come up with. And that's reflected in the performance of the image images. It increased the speed of my development. Now, when I want to add a new layout to the site, when I want to work on the website, I don't have to previously, I had to kind of go, right, okay, I need these image sizes. I need 190 pixels, 380 pixels, whatever. I'd have to go into a, another file and I'd have to list those and the Custom tool will then pick up on those image sizes I need and then generate them. Um, but now I just insert those image sizes where I'm inserting the image and it will on request sort that out for me. I don't need to worry about doing that. And particularly if you're working on a site like WordPress where it could be quite time consuming and difficult to, um, to add a new image size, then uh, it has a big impact on speed of development. And it reduced the site build time in, uh, in CI, in uh, my build, build tool. It reduced from 12 minutes to two minutes, which is pretty crazy. There is no such thing as a free launch though. There are some things to watch out for. Um, and the first is cost. It's an external service. There is a cost implement, implement implication, there we go. Um, many have a generous free tier. I've got, I think, five websites that all sit within the free tiers of uh, image CDNs. Larger sites will cost, and the pricing model, de model depends on the provider. But unless you have a huge number of images and you're, I don't know, Facebook, unless you're a massive company uh, that does a lot of process processing, has a huge team, it's likely cheaper than developers maintaining image processing or spending time faffing with plugins, with different, um, different plugins, different integrations, stuff like that, trying to get what you'd, what you'd like. Uh, it can also be offset by reduced server load, storage requirements, or build infrastructure. Um, at my work, we've started to use image CDN as standard on all projects because we can, the cost of server that we have to buy for a fairly high traffic site can be halved if we don't have to process images at all. Um, and that's just because 
you know, processing images, you know, someone uploads like five images on a, on a new page and it's resizing them to 10 different image sizes each to four different image formats to crop, crop uh, doing a few images with crops, uh, more sizes. It can be a huge amount of strain on a server. And by reducing that, we can pay for significantly less for our servers. Same with storage requirements or build infrastructure, if that's relevant to you. Another slight tricky element is uh, if you develop sites locally, then if you add an image locally, it's not accessible publicly for the image CDN uh, to access. Uh, there's a few different solutions to this. You could disable the CDN for local development, but that then doesn't reflect your production environment. You could offload images to cloud storage. This is, a lot of people do this anyway, so it can be quite useful. Um, solution to this, or if I'm just working on a Wii site, then I can just push my images to a to my site or to a secret development URL that uh, that is the one used when I'm developing uh, when needed. It also for extremely high performing sites, so this, this is unlikely to affect most sites, but if you're really, really getting into uh, performance, then the fact you're loading an image from a different origin will have a impact. Um, so particularly how long it takes the first image to load, see in these two waterfall charts um, that there is an 110 millisecond connection time in the top example when it has to connect to an external domain that isn't there on the bottom example. And you could, um, there are various solutions to deal with, the, deal with this. If your host supports it or you run your own infrastructure, you could uh, proxy the image URLs. So here's an example using Nginx and Netlify, um, or Nginx or Netlify rather, that will allow you to proxy the image CDN, which potentially increases performance, but you'll need to see how that works for you. So wrapping up, should you consider image CDNs in your next project? Absolutely. I don't know why you'd expect me to say anything else at this point, um, but the benefits that you can gain from it are really quite big. Um, you can improve the performance of images on your website pretty significantly, even if you've got a website that already performs pretty well. You can make working with images easier during development. And this is the thing that's biggest for me in that I do not, if I have any say in the matter, and over the past year and a half, I, I have and haven't worked on a site that doesn't use an image CDN because it feels so much faster. It feels like I can build pages so much quicker when I'm, I used to kind of build out a page using the source image and then I'd come back and spend a few hours going through every image on the page going, right, okay, I need to generate some image sizes for this. What sizes, what sizes attribute? I need to reformat them into what formats? Okay. Um, but now I literally just, as I go, I'm like, okay, here's the image sizes and it will handle it all for me because it's just a case of manipulating URLs, manipulating strings. And as I said, reducing the resources required for your server or your build can be a pretty big impact too. Okay, thank you, that's me. Um, these slides, slides, all of my sources, loads of helpful links are available on my website uh, at the link there. Uh, I'm on social media at Qdo. If you have any questions, then I'd love to answer them now, but if you don't think of them for a while, then feel free to um, tweet them to me. Uh, my website is alistairshepherd.uk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alistair. That was really awesome. Thank you. <laughs> um, we'll just wait for, I think questions can take a little second to come through for us on here, but I have some. What was actually good was any time I thought of a question, you actually answered it, <laughs> <laughs> which was good for a wee while. You kept every time I thought of something and then you, oh, there's my question going. <laughs> um, which is a good thing, it's a sign of a good talk. Um, have you, um, how do you find 
CDNs and images in general can affect um, as you're a web developer, I'm a web developer, we're probably hearing more and more about web vitals. Um, how do you, can you chat a bit about how images and CDNs could affect web vitals? Yeah, sure. Um, so the biggest impact on web vitals that image CDNs have um, will be your uh, largest contentful paint, as it's called, which is basically how long it takes the biggest thing that is content on the page of the site to, to load in. Um, and particularly, generally speaking, that's an image. Um, so image performance is really important for your first load for that largest contentful paint. Um, image CDNs, generally speaking, will be improving and making, not necessarily improving performance because you can make a really good performing thing website yourself without an image CDN, but they make it really easy to improve the performance of images. So if you stick um, the, if you've done a lighthouse test, which web vitals, if you're caring about web vitals, you probably are, then one of your suggestions for images is oftentimes use next gen formats or um, load images at the size they're displayed at or it's something along those lines. Um, image CDNs make that really easy and particularly the next gen image formats will handle it automatically without any thought needed. Great, thank you. And would you put any other assets? You've chatted a lot about images. Um, would would you consider putting other assets on a CDN? Uh, yeah, I, I definitely. Um, I think where possible, sticking all of your stacking static assets on the CDN is really useful and really good for performance. Uh, it gets into the the kind of uh, nitty gritty of ideally. If your entire website is served by a CDN, then it's not a problem because um, everything is coming from the same source. Uh, it can be a bit tricky if your HTML is coming from a server and then your static assets are coming from a CDN. That can improve performance a lot. Alternatively, it might decrease performance because I mentioned that different origin of 110 milliseconds connection time. There's an extra step there that uh, can change things, but CDNs are really useful for, in some cases, they can make a big difference. You just have to make sure to test. And that's the thing with performance testing in general. You just test a lot and find out what actually works for you. Yeah, testing and benchmarking as yeah, with a lot of things in development is really important. Um, we have got some questions from folks. Um, we had Mark say yeah, the same thing as me every time you had a question, you answered <laughs> it. Um, but that it was awesome, though, so thank you. Um, we have one from Dominic. Can you show slides with example CDN providers? I think maybe to, to bring that slide back up, I think. Please yes, do. I will find that. Uh, it's here. Somewhere. There we go. They, were they were really great slides, though. Uh, <laughs> well, where you're going back through them, I really liked them. Yeah, great. Thank you. Um, um, yeah, so I'll, I'll quickly mention these. Um, Cloudinary is the biggest one. Um, it's kind of the, the big industry leader, and they push a lot of uh, image performance on the web. Um, but also, yeah, check out ImageX, cloudimagekit.io. Um, all are great um, and pretty offer really good performance and uh, I've used them all um, pretty well. My suggestion, if you've got a small site, try out Cloud Image. They've got a, a free tier that, I mean, I've, I've got several sites on Cloud Image that don't cost me anything. Um, if you've got a big website, then ImageX is fantastic for bulk pricing and can, generally speaking, I've got uh, one website we have at work has ends up processing 200 gigabytes of images per month, which is a slightly mind-blowing amount, to be honest. Uh, it's a high-traffic website, so I guess it makes sense. Um, but in ImageX, that costs $40 a month, which is not much for, for what, what's, what you're getting. But yeah, try check them all out. Try them all. 
Yeah, and as you mentioned, because that's been kind of offloaded from your hosting costs, it's probably costing a lot, like less than it's saving. I think I don't yeah. put that the right way around. Um, yeah, it's definitely. definitely more efficient that way. Um, and we've got one here from you. And let me see. Um, Slack channel received an alert today about performance degradation in Netlify. Your question is, have you implemented a failover approach for image CDNs in case they're unreachable? That's an that's a good question. No, I haven't. Uh, generally speaking, I've I, I use Netlify quite a bit for my sites and tend to have a uh, at least for my Jamstack sites tend to have a I tend to proxy the uh, image CDN through Netlify, um, which has an added benefit if you use Netlify that Netlify will add an additional caching layer. So in this case, where the image CDN is unreachable, there is an additional layer that might catch it. Generally speaking, though, I haven't worked on kind of high enough impact, critical enough resources that 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 like ninety nine point nine percent uptime isn't good enough. Um, I do recommend a lot of people will. Um, if you use some integrations with image CDNs, you can be kind of uploading your images to Cloudinary to your to your image CDN, which I don't really like as a general concept because in that case, if you're uploading all of your images to Cloudinary instead of storing them on your own systems, then if Cloudinary disappears, goes bust, um, you, they suddenly increase their prices, then you are bound to them. Um, so it's not a failover, I guess, but I think it's really important to have your source assets available somewhere else, available on um, some sort of somewhere you control, um, which means that if you can't rely on Cloudinary, then you can strip it out and stick a stick ImageX in, and it will have it'll be a very quick fix. Um, failover approach. One thing I have seen someone do is. Um, is have like uh, almost, I guess it's like load balancing between multiple different image CDNs. Uh, you can, if you have your own proxy server, then you can kind of make the make the URL formats the same. So go to whichever image CDN you need. So that would be a way that you could have a, a failover, have a backup. Yeah, it definitely is um, uh, an interesting one to consider for like disaster recovery scenarios and things like that. Yeah, um, yeah and do, do, I imagine many of these probably, although it doesn't mitigate the the example that you gave of you know they suddenly disappear. Um, a lot of these will have, I assume, like kind of geo replication, and that they can, if the UK one is down, then maybe the US one is up, for example. Yeah, in actual fact, most of these image CDNs don't run their own CDN infrastructure. They're generally using CloudFront or Akamai or Bunny CDN or one of the big other CDN providers. So, um, I mean, there's potentially an issue if AWS goes down. But my kind of thing is, if AWS is going down, then your website is the least of everyone's problem. <laughs> Yeah, it's Slack, that. it's Twitter, it's all these bigger, yeah, bigger if services. Yeah, AWS or, or Azure go down, then we'll probably hear about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Azure probably is, is on a few too. <laughs> so I'll just wait to see if any more questions um, come through, but um, we've had a thumbs up and a thank you from Ewan and Dominic for answering their questions, so thank you. Um, and again, I would just say thanks for, for joining us, for spending your your evening with us and sharing um, all this awesome knowledge. It's really, really interesting, I think so. No problems. Um, yeah, just if, even if uh, you have any questions in a few hours, a few days or whatever, then I've got some helpful links for image optimization and image CDNs and all of that on my website. And uh, feel free to contact me. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much. Um, and everyone else will see on the next event when we've got Sarah joining us to chat about um, Azure and Octopus deploying. 
Um, till then, um, you can catch us on, on Twitter or on Meetup or on LinkedIn <laughs> and all of those services. Um, do get in touch. But just one last time, thank you so much, Alistair. Much appreciated. Thank you. Cheers. Have a good night.